Rust is killing JavaScript. Uh, I'm sorry to say it, but it's true. Rust is killing JavaScript and in all the best ways possible. Hello everyone, my name is Harry Wolf. I talk about code around these parts and today I want to talk about a new trend that I'm seeing develop in the world of front end. As mentioned initially, uh, Rust is killing JavaScript, but in all the ways that I am most excited about. So this whole video actually started with a tweet of mine that I wrote the other day. Uh, I was kind of curious why Rust is being used by more and more JavaScript projects nowadays. Why, why not C or C++, which has been around forever? It seems like everywhere you look nowadays for lower level, more foundational JavaScript projects, they're increasingly looking towards Rust as a new part of their build chain. So for example, you look at Next.js, which I've made many videos about. It's a lovely framework for React applications. And in their latest blog post, they actually have a whole section about adopting a Rust-based tool called SWC. Easiest way to think about SWC is it's essentially Babel in Rust. So Babel is a, is a compiler, it is awesome, it is still written in JavaScript, and as a result, slow, uh, especially at scale. Rust doesn't have that issue as much. As you can see, it says right here, it's 20x faster than Babel on a single thread, and 70x faster on a four core benchmark. Well, that just made my jaw drop. And the Next.js team is looking to replace Babel with SWC and Tercer. Both Babel and Tercer are gonna be replaced with SWC. They have some initial test results of things dropping from half a second to less than under a second, which is just mind boggling how fast that is. If you've ever worked on a large application, you can understand that as your application scales, the tooling that's currently written in JavaScript doesn't really scale in the same pace. Taking even further, you look at Parcel, which actually did the same thing that Next.js is now doing earlier this year, where it's actually also looking towards SWC to replace Babel as its compiler. And again, the previous beta without Rust to Rust, without Rust to Rust. So again, the results are speaking for themselves and the speed wins which translate to productivity wins are just, I can't wait to play with these things. Of course, everybody knows and is starting to love Dino, which is also itself built on Rust for a lot of its low level built-in modules. It kind of delegates out to Rust and then kind of parcels that information back to JavaScript land. And it kind of has its whole foundation in most ways, in almost all ways in Rust for, again, speed, but then also other reasons, which, Brings me to the latest installment of a application switching to Rust, which is uh, Rome. These are written by the folks who initially wrote Babel, so they know compilers a little bit, and they've announced that they're switching to rewrite their application, their, their project in Rust itself. Uh, this reason for turning to Rust is actually the most interesting in my opinion because they actually don't talk about speed, which is not true for all the other examples that I just showed you. No, what they're actually most interested in is A, being to rely on third-party dependencies that are what they want, which means that they don't have to worry about code size and performance is built in. Uh, correctness of the application is built into the language. It means that if a Rust application compiles, then it's pretty much good. You're not going to get any runtime errors. It will be correct. And then also just the actual trait module system, which is a feature of Rust, is easier for them to use in building their own program. And then last but not least, so these are all JavaScript applications that are turning towards Rust, but you also have uh, Chrome itself looking for Rust, where they're saying that there's Three ways to make Chrome faster. One is to make C++ faster through compile time checks, through runtime checks, or using a memory safe language. And the blog post goes on about how compile time checks is too hard in C and C++. Runtime checks are too expensive, to the, too much of a performance hit. And as such, they're exploring options two, which is runtime, but also three in the way 
of rust. So Chrome itself is turning to rust. And you know what? That is all great. I think it is fantastic that everything is moving to rust because for all these programs that I rely on, the big argument about you know moving to Rust is it makes it harder for external contributors to develop the project. And that's that's true. Uh, Rust will definitely increase the friction, the bar to entry towards contributing to Rome. But imagine if Babel turned to Rust. Would you care as long as it was faster? Do you yourself make Babel plugins? Have you do you know anybody firsthand? Who has made a Babel plugin. If the argument to not go to Rust, which has so many advantages built into the language and the ecosystem, and the trade-off is the barrier to entry becomes higher, I think that's a fair trade-off to make, especially when you look at some of these performance increases here, because the performance increases are going to have a outsized impact across a sea of developers that are building off of Rust in the low-level side of things. And the fact that it's hard to maybe customize Next.js, again, probably fine. I don't see myself contributing to Next.js core anytime soon. So why am I going to worry about the barrier to entry getting too high? If you do want to contribute, then you have an excuse now to learn a new language, which I have talked about on this channel before. I'm dying to spend more time learning Rust. It sounds interesting and exciting. Uh, but if that's the cost to contribute to Chrome, which God help me if I ever decide to contribute to Chrome, you'll know I've gone off the deep end because that's scary as all heck. Uh, you'll know that it's a great joint open source contributions while learning something new to put on that old resume. And again, you can read this thread if you want, link to it in the, in the description, but I actually ended up having to mute this thread. It was the first Twitter thread, humble brag, that I ever had to mute because the conversation definitely struck a chord with people. And really the question I was posing is, was it that, was it, it's not only the fact that Rust is faster than JavaScript, which is why Rust is being adopted, because C and C++ have been around for decades, and it's also faster than JavaScript, but JavaScript projects have not turned towards C and C++ to adopt in a very large scale way in their projects, which means that speed alone is not the reason why projects are moving to Rust. There's a whole ecosystem of reasons, which honestly, the Rome blog post does a good job of elaborating on why. But it's nice that there's now a project that's a language that's easy, easy, relatively easier to pick up than C and C++ that gets you the same speed benefits amongst many other things. So I, for one, am very excited for our future Rust overlords. I look forward to having blazing fast recompile times that just make my entire life oh so very happy. So I'm excited. And if I ever get the time to actually learn Rust, well, it won't be Rust anymore. I had to say that joke. I'm very, very sorry. That is this week's video. I hope you enjoyed. If you do have an interest in Rust, let me know why in the comments below. Just for variety or because you actually think you might make a project in it. Uh, and also, is the fact that Next.js is using Rust going to make you never contribute to Next.js core? And if that's true, were you ever going to really? Because that would be really a shame if that was the thing that stopped you. So that is this week's video. Thank you for watching. See you again in the next one. Until then, don't get rusty, but stay happy and stay coding. Bye.